In this episode of Benyomo, we're going to address the question of coffee. The question of drinking coffee in a non-kosher coffee house. For hundreds of years, Paiskum have addressed the propriety or impropriety of drinking coffee in a non-Jewish coffee house. In today's modern coffee house, there's almost no cross-contamination between any non-kosher food and drink that could make the coffee or its equipment non-kosher. However, in almost every modern coffee shop, there will be a high temperature dishwasher used to sanitize the food service equipment and the coffee service equipment. And they could be washed together at the same time, which raises a question whether the dishwasher makes the coffee equipment non-kosher. So how does a dishwasher work? Water comes into the dishwasher, which is then heated by this element here. The water is then drawn by a pump into these sprayers, which sprays the water onto the dishes, which washes the dirt off of the dishes. So the dirt on the dishes gets knocked into the water on the bottom of the dishwasher, and it just sits there, cooking in the hot water and being sprayed over and over again all over your dishes. Milchig water, fleshig water, even treif water. So basically you have very fleshig or milchig or treif water that's being heated right there, a klirisha, and being sprayed all over your dishes again and again and again. Now that we know how a dishwasher works, it should come as no surprise that we don't recommend going to non-kosher coffee shop to drink coffee made in equipment that was washed in a non-kosher dishwasher. While we're talking about dishwashers, what happens if we make a mistake? Let's say you have a Fleischica dishwasher and someone accidentally put a Milchica spoon into the dishwasher. So now, and that was from the cereal this morning. They had cereal and milk, there was a little residue on the, on the spoon. This is the most common Shiloh with dishwashers. In that case, we would say the dishwasher is still kosher because the amount of milchiks in that dishwasher is going to be bought to Mashishim. The residue is minute compared with the water that's going through the dishwasher. Even the bleach of the spoon may not be a problem, and even if they are a problem, it's still a minute amount compared with the volume of the dishwasher itself. And therefore, the spoon is bottle b'shishim, the milchix is bottle b'shishim in the dishwasher. The dishwasher is kosher, all the kalim are kosher with the exception of the spoon itself. So very simple, Eitzah, if a milchix spoon goes into a fleshik dishwasher and you ran a cycle, you would take the spoon, you would let it sit for 24 hours, you would put it into boiling water, and the rest of the dishwasher and the rest of the kalim are kosher. Enough about dishwashers, let's get back to coffee shops. So the real problem in a coffee shop, assuming that everything that's going into your cup is kosher, is going to be the dishwasher. Even if there may be some flavored inclusions, they're not going to rise to the level of making the kalim not kosher. The real problem is the dishwasher washing coffee service equipment together with food service equipment. Let's make this simple. Coffee shops. Of course it's preferable to go to a kosher certified coffee shop. If one's traveling and you know that everything's going into your cup is kosher, there's room to be lenient and to buy coffee, even in a non-kosher coffee shop. As long as you know that everything that's going into your cup, like black coffee, is kosher. Remember that there are a lot of things that coffee shops have, syrups, bases, mixes, that are not kosher certified. And the only way in an uncertified environment for you to know whether they're kosher is to actually see that they're kosher. There are coffee chains that don't use high temperature dishwashers, and it'll be easier to drink all kosher drinks in those kinds of stores. It's very common in the Dunkin' Donuts chain for all the hot water to be limited to 120 degrees. If that would be the case, and you'd probably need to verify it, then there wouldn't be any problem of cross-contamination between Kalim because the water doesn't rise to the level of Yad Zaleta's bump. Now there are drinks in Starbucks that are made in a way that never come into contact with dishwashed equipment. Those are espresso-based drinks. Espresso-based drinks like cappuccino, or macchiato, and so on and so forth, as long as everything that goes into your cup is kosher certified, do not present the dishwasher problem. For a full list of those, see the Star K website at www.star-k.org under the Starbucks list. While we're on the topic of coffee, we might as well address the Keurig machine. The Keurig machine is a dedicated machine. It's kalim miyuchadim. There is nothing else that you do with a Keurig machine except put K-cups in it. And generally speaking, you don't take it out and put it in a dishwasher. So the question is, can I use a Keurig machine in my office where there are people who are not kosher? Can I kosher my Keurig for Pesach? Or if I get a used Keurig, what can I do with it? The first question is, was the Keurig ever used for non-kosher or hummus? Now, plain coffee is not hummus. In addition to that, there may be flavored coffees which absolutely require a hechsher or other specialty drinks which also require a hechsher, but they wouldn't rise to the level of making something really that treif or hummus thing. 
There was a time when they had chicken soup cake cups, which were absolutely trafe. Otherwise, we would advise that a curry machine could actually be kashered for Pesach by running a cycle. Now, it's important to note that the cup holder in the cake cup is made out of plastic. We would advise getting a new replacement cake cup holder for Pesach for your curry machine. Some people think it's a chumrah to um, kasha sink with an immersion heater because the, uh, there are shitas in the Rishonim that irui isn't even, um, it doesn't even ask a great klipa. So we're machma that ask a great klipa. If it doesn't ask a great klipa, that means it's not mavashal a great klipa. And so how is it going to get out any issa or chametz? that uh, was in the oven, which is, would go in there today Klipa. I'm not in favor of that. As a matter of fact, I think that cash, that um, cashing with an immersion heater is not considered a Klirishan, uh, according to all shitas. Now, there's a Beis Shlomo, a tshuva from the Beis Shlomo, who says that when you put an immersion heater into the water, since you're not heating up the bottom of the sink, so the sink is, is cold, and you're putting hot water into a cold kli. So it's like a klisheni, because Tosis says that the reason why a klisheni is not mavashal is because the tfanas makaros, that the walls of the keli are going to cool off the water. So Masham argues and says, well, we see it boils. So how do you say that it's not so hard? And he, but he says, no, it's a klisheni. And based on this base Schleimer, I would venture to say that if you cook up water in a, a microwave oven, that it's also a cliché, because the microwaves do not have any effect on the glass or whatever else you're using.